Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV. And once again, we have the lovely Ellen Wayne from Silhouette UK join us. Now, Ellen, hello, how are you? Hi, not too bad. How's things with yourselves? Yeah, very busy, but uh, everything is good. It's better to be busy than the other way. So, yes. um, yeah, how, how's everything with you guys? Are you busy? You like yourselves, very busy, but busy is a good thing, right? It is, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Really well, good, really good. Obviously, you showed us the Cameo 4 the last time you were on a, a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, whenever it was, and um, that was really good. But today, you're actually going to show us, aren't you, how to, how to use it and to do the basic, basically cut something and put it onto a balloon. Yeah, that's right. So I have um, got a balloon here, which um, was inflated earlier on this morning. So what I'm going to do today is cut out some some vinyl on the Cameo 4 yep. and then apply it to, to the balloon. I will point out so to everybody, today. I will point out to everybody watching that the balloon that Ellen's got there, it is a bubble balloon, but she didn't have any 260 Qs. So it, uh, <laughs> it has gone down a little bit, but the principle's the same. We recognize it's not yeah. fully inflated, but the principle's the same. Okay, over to you. Okay, so um, as we went through on the last video, this is the Cameo 4 um, machine. This is the, the color of white. Um, what I'm going to do is use the auto detect blade because today we're going to be cutting standard vinyl. Yeah. Um, so the standard vinyl that we're using today is some vinyl that yourselves have sent over. Oh yeah, rose um, gold. Yeah, so we've gone for a, a pink rose gold today. Um, all I'm going to do is load us into the machine um, and then I'm going to send over um, a standard job. I'm going mm -hmm. to do some text. Um, and then send that through and then I'll apply it to, to the balloon. So as as you can see, we've turned the machine on. I'm just gonna rotate it ever slightly so I can just have a I can just load the machine up. And mm -hmm. um, we've got the built-in roll feeder as I mentioned in the last video. Yeah. So I'm just gonna use this just to guide the material in. We are using a sheet today mm -hmm. rather than a roll. So um, same principle, just gonna load it in through the front. What you want to do as well. Um, when you are loading material into the machine is there is some gray arrows on the actual machine itself yeah this helps um you know gives you an idea of where to load the media into so um yeah you, if you're working with a 12 inch piece of vinyl or whether you're working with a nine inch piece of vinyl you've got those arrows there to guide you um, okay. where the pinch rollers need to be um, and also you know where, where to load the material into so I'll just load this up now, making sure that both the pinch rollers, so what I mean by pinch rollers is just the edge of the, the, the rollers on the actual um, pole here um, yeah. is, is on top of the material. Because if it's not on top of the material, then the, the media is going to skew, it's going to move as the, the sheet of vinyl is going in, in and out of the machine. So they're the ones that they actually hold it down, don't they? Yeah, they, they hold yeah. it down. And then you've got the ones in the middle which just apply pressure to okay. keep it flat as it's going in and out of the machine. Okay, so cool. once you're happy with that, I'm gonna load it in like this. And then just press the arrow and then take the media in. Just like that. Yeah. Um yeah, so as did before, this is the auto detect blade. So it's got your, your sensor on the back. You're just going to load that into carriage number one. Make sure it's all clicked in place. Okay. Once it's clicked in place, all you need to do then is send the job through on the software. So I'll just go on to the software now. Okay. Okay. So. Well, this is this really clever, is... really technical. I'm liking this, Alan. <laughs> So this is the Silhouette Studios. This is the software which is included when you purchase the Cameo 4 yeah. or any of the die cutting Cameos or Silhouette machines. So this area here is what is your area that you use the media to put into the machine. Mm -hmm. This here is, is what would be a cut, cut mat. So all the machines are shipped with a Silhouette cutting mat. So in with previous models, you could never die cut, so cut all the way through the material without using one of these cut mats. Yeah. So the software 
you know, kind of um, advised that to show you that this is the area that you've got to work with because the cut mats were specific size. Okay. Whether that was um, a 12 by 12 or a 12 by 24 inch, this is, it, it's just more user friendly, just so you as a user um, understand the size that, you, that you've got to work with. But you're not using that, you're not so, putting that mat in on this occasion, are you? You're just putting the vinyl in? Not on this not on this occasion, no. So because I'm not using that, this um, this op this design option here, you can tell the machine that you're not using a cut mat. Okay. Oh, there you go. So it takes it away. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you tell the, the software that you're not using a cut mat, it'll take it away. If you're using a cut mat, then um, yeah, it can it will change the the size. It'll just give it a back in okay. there. So today I am not using one. So just click no, and then you can decide and tell the machine what size media that you're working with okay. today. Today I'm working with an A4 sheet, and I've loaded it in a landscape rather than portrait. Okay. So you can change all that there. If you were working with a specific size yeah. media, whether that was an off-cut piece of media um, or whether it wasn't anything that was a default here, you can customise that and you can amend that just there. Okay. So these sizes here, 8 by 12, that's the size, that, that's the measurements of the size media I have in my machine. Okay. So just to make life a little bit more easier. Um, yeah. So this is now the uh, gives you an idea of what you're what you're working with and making sure that within these red lines here, this red box, your design needs to be. Otherwise, th th this basically this bit here, it, the machine's not going to pick it up. Okay. So within the red within the red lines, which is a cut border, that's where you need to create ah, your design. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, I'm just going to type in happy birthday that sort of things that people tend to put on balloons they do that quite a so, lot yeah happy quite a lot <laughs> happy birthday there we go so what i'm going to do here is that's quite a standard block text so i want to make it a little bit more groovier i'm going to go and select on this here so there is set fonts in the software, yeah. but you can download them, download um, them from you know the internet. Yeah. Different types, different tile, style types, which is what I've done here today. So this would just pick up so any fonts like that you've got on your computer. Is that right? Yeah, whichever cool. you've installed onto your computer, it will pick up in the software. So I'm going to do this. You can also zoom in as well. Take a closer look your designs yeah so i'm just going to make that a little bit bigger mm -mm -mm. i'm going to make that about eight inch I'm going to rotate it just so i can get them both to, so i want to i want to save the media so i'm just rotating rotating that so they'll both fit on happy this looks very birthday. easy Oh yeah, it is, it is, once you get your head around where all the different features are, it is very straightforward. It's just drag and drop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So once you're happy with your design, um, what I've done here, it's two, two separate designs. I'm going to make it, I'm going to merge them both into one. So I'm just going to group them. So now they're just one design. Oh yeah. Once I've done that, as simple and straightforward as it can be, I'm going to send it to the, the send tab. So your design is where you create your design. Send is when you this when you're ready now to send okay. it through to the machine to cut. So tool number one is the carriage tool number one. Tool number two is carriage tool number two. Yeah. So you've got no cut, cut, cut to edge, no cut, it's not going to pick up any of the outlines. Cut is the outlines of each design and cut edge just merges them together. So you always want to select cut. What do you mean cut edge? I don't understand what that means. 
To be honest, I don't really know either. Um, <laughs> it just looked thicker um, when you when you clicked on that. But we don't need to worry about it. It's just you choose cut, and that's going to cut it out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think when you're using cut edge, is if you've got um, like a full color, like a full design, so a flower or you know you know a design. Yeah. Instead of cutting um, around the each different petal, for instance, it will merge and make it into one block. Oh, I see, okay. I think that's what it is. Um, so yeah, you just want to select cut. Um, material then, they, the materials in the software, they're all um, silhouette materials. Okay. So they're all default settings in there. So you have all different types of material. We're using vinyl. So I'm just going to go down and find some glossy vinyl. Do, 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 read, do, read some do. of those out, Ella. I can't really see from where I'm standing, but what have you got? You've got foil, you've so, got... So you've got foil to emboss, you have heat transfer vinyl, yeah. you've got leather, leather. Wow. you've got magnet paper, you've got um, rhinestone templates, stencil material, sticker paper, wow. tattoo paper. And then vinyl, which we're using today. So much more than just vinyl, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. You can you can have the option to scroll through and have a look at the different types of media. Yeah. You can also search. So if we wanted to, you know, instead of browsing through like I've just done, yeah. you can type in vinyl. Oh yeah, cool. And select the option. If you're working with a different material which isn't actually um, got its own option in there, you can add a new material. So if you found that you're working with this vinyl, for instance, and you know the settings that it is, yeah. you can add it as um, rose gold vinyl, and then you can you can set and save all them settings under that new material type. Yeah. If you wanted to, so it just gives you the options there, just change. Just preset for you, yeah. And force. Yeah. So, tool action is cut because it's already connected via Bluetooth. It's automatically detected that it's got an auto blade in there. Okay. So we're going to be cutting it. If you had a pen in there, it will pick up sketch. Mm -hmm. That's all to do with the sensors on the blades. So you'd select auto. You just wouldn't need to select it because it was selected already. Yeah. Tool. These are the different types of tools that you can get. It's picked up the auto blade yeah. because of the sensor. If you had different blades in there with the adapters, it would pick up these types of blades here. Okay. But the but the software's picked up ourselves, so we just need to make sure it's right, and then we're good to go. Perfect. Um. So this is the default settings for cutting vinyl, which is glossy. So you've got force and you've got speed, and here is the amount of blade which is getting used. Okay. So with cutting vinyl, a blade of one and two is, is kind of the standard blade depth that you're going to need. Okay. Um, and then you've got force, which is usually between 10 and 14. That's just a standard force for any type of vinyl. Okay. But it can change depending on the quality of the vinyl as well. So it's always uh, best to, to play around with the force. Okay. Speed, you can take up to, to the, the highest speed it can go to, so it'll be very quick, or you can keep it nice and, and slow and steady. The speed, you don't yet ever need to change this really. Um, if you're using you know block designs, which are quite big, you yeah. might want to increase the speed then. If you're doing small intricate designs, small texts, or um, fancy texts like we've got here, yeah. You want to keep the speed um, quite quite slow, so it's going to pick up each design. Okay. Um, if the the problem if you was to send it across too quickly, is it will perform the cut and it can always get stuck in corners, for instance, and it will lift up. That's always a problem that that can occur. So you know, don't be silly when it comes to speed. Just uh, just do the sort of default. You don't want to go at any higher than fifteen. Yeah, um, yeah. Then you've got passes. 
you can do numerous different passes so it will just send the job through multiple times depending on how many you've got in there so if you found that now if i send the job through it's cut but it's not cut all the way through you know like we have not, yeah. it hasn't picked up in certain corners or in certain letters we can just send it through again and it will just perform the same cut in the same place okay all right Ellen, can I just say you're making this very difficult for me because you're answering all the questions before I ask them, so <laughs> which is a good thing. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm just here saying yes. Oh, okay, yes. But you're doing you're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send the job through. The machine is all set, ready to go. I'm just going to increase the force because I know with this material we tend to use at a 14 or 50. So I'm just going to reduce the speed down. You've put that onto sure cut edge now, is that right? Yeah, because what I've realised, I, I know I know the answer to your question okay, now. Okay, good. So you've got, so you've got cut, do you want to ask me again? Okay, what, what's <laughs> so the can, difference in cut say. and cut edge, Ellen? <laughs> so with cut, it cuts out each different letter. If you're cutting edge, as you can see Aha, now, yes. when you've got the H which overlaps the A, it's just going to do the outside of the design. Ah, rather right, than okay. cut so it's cut edge that you're likely shape. to want. Yeah, with okay. this. Yeah. Good. When you're doing text, you want to want to select cut edge. Okay. Okay. So um, here is you can do test cut. So you've got one or two. One means carriage number one. Two means carriage number two. We're using carriage number one because we're using each. We're using some vinyl. Yeah. This, these arrows here. This is the control panel, but within the software, so you can move the machine in the software okay. as well as on the actual control control panel on the machine. Yeah. Um. So instead of sending the job through, and then we find that it's not at the right settings, we can do a test cut. So if I send the test cut through now, what it's doing is it's going to do a little triangle within a little square to see whether we've cut through the material enough. So I'm going to unload the media and then I'm just going to check okay. whether it's whether it's going to um, cut through the media enough. So I'll take a closer picture of this so you can see okay. it and then zoom in on it. Um, so as you can see, it's performed a nice square there. I'm just going to apply a bit more force because it was quite a small design. I want to, because we're doing text, I want to make sure it picks, picks up each letter. Okay. So I'm just going to reload. And then increase the force to about 17. And then I'm going to send the job over. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm quite excited. <laughs> there we go. Send as it is. We don't need to mirror it, are we? When you have these default settings as well, so with heat transfer vinyl, mm -hmm. you'd need to mirror the design okay because you're going to be weeding from because you're going to be cutting from the back I see, yeah whereas if if you're just cutting on vinyl we're going to be using transfer tape to apply yeah. it onto onto an, another product yeah so the software does prompt you to mirror the design okay which is very helpful because the amount of times that i've been working with heat transfer vinyl and not mirrored the design <laughs> <laughs> Send as it is, please. Okay, so that's now all done. Okay. So what we need to do is unload the machine, just pressing this button here, mm -hmm. and then you're left with your design, which has been all cut out. So you need to now weed away the material. So take away the material that we don't need away. 
So we'll work from the corner. Just try and pick it off. So you're literally just picking out the, th the bits that you don't want to put on the balloon. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just weed away material that you don't need, leaving the, the design, the lettering on the backing sheet. So you just want to be very careful that you don't pick up the design that you want to have on the balloon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just using um, a scalpel at the moment, but um, I know a lot of customers do tend to use a weeding tool. It just helps the process a little bit more. Yeah, we sell the little weeding tool. It's basically just a, a spike, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, just a sharp edge to pick the, the material with. This is probably the most fluffiest part about when you're working with vinyl is weeding away. Yeah. The excess. Have you got any tips on how to do it? Slow. <laughs> Otherwise, if you pick up, if you do, if you go too fast, you've always got that um, risk of picking up too much media. Yeah. Or picking up the design that you actually wanted to work with. So if you just take your time with it. But to be for this material, this vinyl is really nice because it's very tacky. Yeah. It's very strong. So it's, it's quite nice to weed this one away. I'm glad to hear that. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to distract you. I could be chatting about the weather or anything, but uh, you, chat you, away, you look like you're worry. concentrating a lot. Yeah, it's just because it is quite a small design. I just don't want to make, pick up material that we need. That's all. But for the viewers that do this on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm probably making it look more difficult than what it is. So how long did it take you to, to be able to pick this up and become competent at it? To be honest, it's really, really straightforward. It was just a case of what what you want to come up with the idea of what you want to do. Yeah. Um me I think the, the most the, the the longest thing you'd need to, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. The Maybe I'm not very good at doing two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. I'll just watch. <laughs> I'm nearly done now. All right. Yeah, picking up quick now. Have you got a question of the week prepared, Ellen? Um, I don't, and I feel panicked about it. <laughs> I, I panicked last time, and my word didn't come out. I don't know. I, I started just mumbling stuff. Well, you could ask that same question, but 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 get it right because right. you said you didn't get it right. No, I don't know why I said what I said. I'm Welsh and I couldn't even get my words out. <laughs> I could ask everyone if they watched the rugby on the weekend. Well, we don't know when we're going to put this out, so it, it, oh. it might not be <laughs> quite right. No, I wasn't going to. I'm not sure really. people would be happy about that, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to cause any upset on the channel. <laughs> Let's not talk politics or sports. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So... Once we have weeded away all the excess material, you'll be left with your hey. design. 
all done. Now what you need to do is apply some transfer tape on top of the design. So I've just got some transfer tape here. Just going to apply it on top of the design. So transfer tape is mm -hmm. basically just the sticky tape. It's like a big roll of sellotape. Just and yeah. some people call it, I can't remember what we call it, we call it transfer tape or application tape, but it's basically yeah. you're transferring it to something else or you're applying it to something else. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly the same thing, exactly the same. Right, so we'll just get rid of that so I'm working with a small piece. Then what you're going to do is another tool which um, is handy when you're working with um, vinyl mm -hmm. is a squeegee yep. is what people call them. Use one of these just to um, apply pressure so then we can transfer the design to the application tape, transfer tape. Pressure. There we go. Then the best way to transfer the design to the application tape is to have the um, transfer tape, the sticky side up. Yeah. Um, and then you want to peel away the full design this way down. And then you can see the design is transferring. Again, keep it nice, slow and controlled. If you just tear it off, then you, you've got a risk of ruining the, the design itself. Yeah. And I guess the more intricate the font, the slower you go. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So as you can see, that's on there. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Then the last step is to get your balloon, which you've already um, pumped off. Yep. Yeah. One that we made earlier. You're then going to position the design on the balloon. I've, I've seen tips on Facebook and people say always put it at an angle because then that way it doesn't matter if it's slightly off. So you're going to put it on straight or at an angle? Um, angle, I'm going to okay. say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly why people put it on at an angle. <laughs> yeah, and, and as we did before, just apply pressure around the design. Yeah. And then we're going to then peel that away nice and slow again. And the design will have been left on the balloon. So you just fold the application tape back on itself to peel it off. Yeah, yeah. That looks like quite sticky application tape you've got. It's quite strong. It is quite strong. Because sometimes we've had people say it, it doesn't actually come off that easily. So we recommend that you put it on your trousers or something or on a sweater a couple of times so it's not too sticky. Would you agree with that? Um, I would agree with that. But you can purchase different types of tack application yeah. films. So you can get ones that, you know, are very high tack. So if you're working with smaller designs, mm -hmm. the higher tack would probably be best suited. Okay. If you're working with block designs, then the standard um, tack application film will be fine. Yeah. And that's the same with vinyl as well. Yeah. Um, if you're working with small designs, you want a more tackier vinyl. Okay. So when you're weeding it away, it's not all gonna pick up. So if you've got yeah. like a, a less strong vinyl, if you're working with small designs, it's yeah. going to be um, a bit difficult to hold the material onto the um, onto the backing sheet. So, as so, this is our end result. There you go. Look at that. That's fantastic. Okay. And that's the application for applying vinyl onto a balloon. That's excellent. Ellen, thank you so much for that. That's um, 
it's quite simple, but like you say, the, the weeding takes a little bit of time, but I guess when you get used to it, and depending what fonts you're using, the, um, the faster mm -hmm. you would get. But of course, the good thing about yes. this, and the thing that a lot of people do, is they're selling a product, they're selling a balloon, um, or a bunch of balloons, or a design with balloons on it, and this just personalizes it, so you can charge considerably more for that, so it's all the added value, but that's, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Well, that was, um, that's really good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, as you know, as a guest on BMTV, you get to ask the question of the week. Um, but of course, we didn't do one the last time you were on. So do you have a question of the week for us? My question of the week means I'm quite new to um, this, this channel. My question would be, what sort of videos would you would yourselves like to see us create? Okay, excellent. All right, so what, what type of videos would you like to see Ellen do for us here on, on BMTV? That'd be really good, actually. That'd be brilliant, Ellen. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. It's really nice of you to do this. And thank you to everybody out there. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. If you've not subscribed, please do. Just hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks once again. Have a great week. Stay happy. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>